Thank you very much, Rick. Uh, as Rick mentioned, I'm working with, for the University of Arkansas Division of Agriculture, Cooperative Extension Service. And I'd like to start with my presentation by thanking my team, Mahmoud Sharara, Rick Fields, and the right. Each, uh, each individual of them contributed to my program and continue contributing to the program. So the presentation titled today is Thermal Conversion of Animal Manure to Biofuel. You will listen to my word thermal several times, which what I mean by thermal is the heat, something we, we convert animal manure as a feedstock utilizing the heat source. The outline of my presentation today will include manure availability and briefly describe some characteristics of manure. What are, what are the motivations for returning back to biorefinery? Conversion technologies, which including biological, com biological conversion technologies, thermochemical conversion technologies, such as com combustion, gasification, and pyrolysis. And I will mention some of the gasification issues, which still challenging the, the technology, even though the technology is well developed. And I will conclude my presentation by what we have to do and what we need to do in the future. So, our focus approach of biorefinery. Bio biorefinery is we are trying to imitate what's happening in the petroleum refinery by processing or converting animal manure or crop residues or any agricultural carbo carbonaceous material to biofuel, biopower, or byproducts. Certainly, it should carry some more value to cover the, the cost of conversion. So in, in general, biorefinery concept is similar to petroleum refinery. However, we start with a raw feedstock such as crop residues or animal waste. We have three major biorefinery approaches. One is the sugar platform. A sugar platform, we try to utilize enzymes to hydrolyze hydrolysis to convert synthetic material to simple sugar, and this simple sugar could be easily fermented to ethanol and certainly other products. Or biochemical platform, which we employ something we call it transesterification process to convert bio oil, vegetable oil, vegetable oil to and animal fat to biodiesel. Both technologies are not valid to the moment for, for animal waste. So thermochemical convert thermochemical platform we employ gasification or fast pyrolysis or certainly combustion burning the material to produce either heat or produce a gas or bio oil. What are the motivation for returning back to biorefinery? Why are you looking for that now? Because we start to, to feel that we have excess manure production in certain certain locations, which is over the application rate for, for land application rate. So we have to find a way, in the next friendly way, that we can utilize this animal manure rather than transporting them to another uh, another location, which would be more costly. So we all know that the global climate change and we need to develop the rural areas. And in addition to that, we need to reduce or help reducing our dependence on foreign oil. So is it available? Yes. We can, we can see from this slide that we have almost, we have said, 60 million dry tons of manure per year. So we need to find a way either if we don't, don't utilize all this for hand application, we need to find an alternative way to utilize animal manure. And what we notice that, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the number of animal farms itself decreased 5% within 10 years, and at the same time, the average farm size increased, which means that the number of animals per, per farm increased 3%. So now we have an, an increased intensity of the uh, number of animals 
perform, which start to increase the density of animal manure in certain locations. So we have several conversion processes from animal manure, for animal manure to value added material. So to the left hand side of this slide, we can produce methane. We cannot produce ethanol yet from fermentation, but that's what will be for, for waste, crop residues or, or other. And the first one we can we can utilize anaerobic digestion, which is a biological conversion process. And on the right hand side we have the three thermochemical conversion processes that include combustion, pyrolysis, and gasification. It depends on my, my final goal, I can utilize which process. If my final goal is to utilize the heat, I can go through combustion. If the goal is to produce liquid oil, I can go through the, if the second to the right, pyrolysis. Or if my final goal is to produce gas that I, I can burn on the farm for heating purpose, I can go through the gasification process. What are the available three technologies for biological conversion so far? First of them, on the top left corner, is anaerobic digestion. And second one is composting. Third is biodrying, which I'll explore with you right now. What is biodrying? What do we mean by biodrying? In anaerobic digestion, we are utilizing two different types of bacteria. They work anaerobically. They, we, we eliminate oxygen from the reactor, from the digester. And the first one is we'll, we'll utilize, we'll take the animal waste converted to more digestible material through acid bacteria. And then the, the other type of bacteria which will produce methane out of this uh, intermediate uh, slurry, and then it will convert it to methane. While it's producing methane, it will produce carbon dioxide, and maybe, depending on the feedstock itself, it will produce hydrogen sulfide or other uh, uh, other gases. <clears throat> In composting, on the other hand, we are utilizing aerobic bacteria, and we have it, as you can see, it's, it's open in the air. We have some pipes that can we can burst air from the bottom, and we are utilizing aerobic bacteria that it will degrade the material to some extent that it will be odor-free almost and can be reapplied back again to the soil as soil, soil amendment. In biodrying, we have a faster process of composting. We developed a faster process of composting. My final goal is not to produce material to, to be applied back again to the soil, but to produce material utilizing the anaerobic, the aerobic bacteria, and this material will be valid that I can use it in gasification process, which I'll show later on. And the biodrying process is a process that I have the, the, the animal manure mixed with crop residues to adjust the carbon to nitrogen ratio that it will allow the bacteria to start to be active, to start degrading the material. And as you can see from the graph, within two to three days, the temperature go up to 65 almost in a swine manure uh, environment mixed with uh, wheat straw. And the temperature goes from room temperature to 65 degree regardless of the outside temperature. And the temperature, this temperature will help drive off moisture from the, the initial material. As you can see here that on the uh, uh, bottom uh, right corner, the moisture content reduced from 60% starting moisture in the case of soil manure to almost less than 40%. That's, that's happened within almost two to three weeks. So that means without external heat, without adding more energy to the system rather than the energy required to drive the fan, we don't, we don't need to add any energy to drive off uh, about 20% of the moisture from uh, animal manure. So the second, second, second technology, second approved technology is the thermochemical conversion method. First, which applied for many, many years is combustion, incinerating manure, and it happened in developed countries for several years. We have to have excess amount of air or oxygen and burn manure to produce heat. I have to 
have a source to utilize, have a, to have a reason on the farm to utilize heat. So I can't easily transport the heat. I have to utilize it on farm. Pyrolysis, I need external heat source to take animal waste and provide it with a heat source from external, external way and this will help me while I'm eliminating totally oxygen to produce bio oil. Bio oil is, as many of you know that, it's similar to crude oil in, in several characteristics. And it can, it can help, I can incorporate it, I can blend it with some other material but not with petroleum products. In between combustion, which is excess air, and pyrolysis, which is zero oxygen or zero air, I can have gasification, limited amount of oxygen with, with manure, and then it will, it will react if I start the heat, uh, start initiate the heat, and then it will produce gas, char, or biochar, and tar. Uh, while in pyrolysis process, I'm, uh, my goal is to maximize the bio oil, which is similar somehow to tar, in, in gasification process, I like to minimize as much as I can the tar because tar will, will be a problematic material if I, inter, if I incorporate, if I burst the producer gas to an internal combustion engine. Twenty something years when we start working in gasification, we, we can say char is, was a problematic material for us because it's a product, byproduct, that we couldn't find away 20 something years to utilize it. But nowadays, it is, it's total, the story is totally different. Biochar can be incorporated back again to the soil and or can be recycled back to the gasifier if it still contain some carbon or heating value. I will show which will be clear in the coming, coming slides. So what's gasification in depth? Gasification is a thermochemical process. I need heat and chemical to, to break the, the bonds between the carbon and the material. Within temperature, very high temperature, 650 to 1000 degrees centigrade. And this will help me break the, the chemical compounds to non-condensable gases. And these non-condensable gases include carbon monoxide, hydrogen, methane, and certainly if I'm introducing air, I will produce some nitrogen and maybe some traces of oxygen and other gases. I call it non-condensable because these gases is producer gas, which is coming on, on the right hand side, as you can see from this slide. Those are non-condensable because they can escape all the, the condenser stages and they can exit out of the system, which I can, can utilize it in an internal combustion engine or any other type of engine. As, I, as you can see here, I have manure, initial heat from top, and I introduce air to produce producer gas, tar and char. We have several reactors proven that they can be utilized to convert animal manure to gas. One of them, we call them the first two on the left-hand side, fixed bed, and one is updraft, and second in the middle is downdraft gasifier. In both cases, we introduce the biomass, in this case, manure from top, and it depends on the way we introduce air or oxygen. For the updraft, for the updraft we introduce it from the bottom. In the downdraft, in the downdraft we introduce it from the center, air and producer gas will be produced at the bottom and certainly we collect the biochar at the bottom. On the other hand, for the ice bed, we introduce the biomass from the center, but to, in, for the ice bed, we have to have a media, a sand, or any other source of, uh, to work as a heat sink that it will keep, it will maintain the heat in the bed. We introduce limited amount of oxygen or air, and we introduce the biomass from the left-hand side. That will, will convert the biomass to non-condensable gases, which will go to the freeboard, and then will be condensed 
will be collected uh, uh, outside of the reactor or can be can send directly to internal combustion engine. That's a schematic diagram of the pressurized bed gasifier which we developed here at University of Arkansas. As you can see, the hopper at the left-hand side bears the, the feedstock in a controlled metering uh, feed rate, which will go to the reactor, and the, react the gas will be escaped to the two cyclones to clean it and bottom of the cyclones, and then the gas will go to the con uh, condensers to condense star, and non-condensable gas will be flared outside. Here is just a, a, a photo, an image for the mobile fluidized bed gasifier, which we developed in the University of Arkansas Division of Agriculture. So we start finding some issues while we were, were trying to gasify some uh, of animal manure, especially if they still contain some moisture because, because of the viscosity they contain. So what we did is we start developing another type of gasifier, which we can call it ogre gasifier. How this ogre gasifier works and what are the advantages and disadvantages of this ogre gasifier? As you can see here, the hopper on the right-hand side contains the material, the feedstock, in this case, and the manure. The metering auger will push the material to be dropped by gravity to another injection auger. And the injection auger is housed in a stainless steel pipe. And the stainless steel pipe is externally heated by an electric heater in this case. And we can control the temperature, the residence time of the material inside the auger, and this converted to producer gas, which will, will go to the condensers, and then it will collect the tar, in this case, at the bottom of these jars, and then the biochar will be dropped to the char collector, and then, as you can see, we measure the composition of the gas. So, one more item here that help us to start thinking deeply about converting manure to producer gas is that we have almost 40%, close to 40% carbon, 5 to 6% maybe in, in several cases, hydrogen. And those are, are the elements which we need to produce carbon monoxide, methane, and hydrogen in the producer gas, which will help us increasing or enhancing the quality of the producer gas. That's a that's a ogre uh, system located in the Rice Center in Stuttgart, Arkansas. As you can see on the right hand side, the, ho the hopper and the injection ogre is housed in a tube furnace, and then the condensers, and then the gas analyzer, and we can we can monitor the temperature in each location, and we can monitor the residence time. Of the, of the material. That's normal, normal producer gas composition. We can see that carbon monoxide will be in the range of 15% in a steady state case. Hydrogen can be in the range of 5 to 6% or sometimes a little bit less. And methane will be in the range of 4 to 5%. That adds up to a BT of the gas on the left hand side here, the producer gas it's almost 125 PTU per cubic foot. The 125 PTU per cubic foot represents almost one-eighth of the natural gas BTU. The natural gas is almost 1,000, and the producer gas, in, in this case, in air gasification, will be in the range of 125 BTU per cubic foot. We start to know that we face some, some challenges during the years of facing a thermochemical conversion of manure. One of them is high moisture content. I cannot take slurry and introduce slurry to a gasifier and ask the gasifier to work. It, it needs to be in a certain level, in a low moisture content level, that it will work in a gasifier. I mentioned earlier that we tried to solve it, and to some extent we succeed to dry the manure, utilizing the bio-drying process, which helped us reducing the moisture content. Feeding challenge 
because of the viscosity condition of the, of the feedstock, we, we start facing some, some kind of issues, but eventually we succeed when we start injecting the material at the bottom and the material will be a little bit dry. So both cases will, will help us overcome these issues. High ash content. Now I start using ash, which earlier I was using char. There is two, two, these are two different terms. Ash is the mineral in the material which will never be burned again. It's the, the mineral composition of the feedstock. And certainly depending on the method of collection and other items, the ash content can be higher or lower based on this type of collection methods. As I mentioned, the producer gas is one eighth of the, of the BTU of the natural gas. So this is still another issue that maybe in the future we can do some, something else by utilizing steam, gasification, or other items to improve the quality or enhance the quality of the producer gas. As I mentioned, Mahmoud is one of my team members. He's doing his PhD, and we are trying to do a two-stage gasification through the same, utilizing the same auger system and to improve the quality of the producer gas by, by destructing more the tar composition in the second stage. One major problem which faced my work while I was doing some gasification work on animal manure earlier, which we call it in, in chemistry agglomeration. The term agglomeration means that the sand which I mentioned in the fluidized bed when it reaches the temperature that it, it in, the temperature more than the fusing, the melting temperature of the sand, this sand will melt and form one particle which will totally stop the gasifier. Other items like maybe tar, tar composition, tar produced, ammonia, sulfur, particulate matter, the fixed and variable costs which should be taking into consideration when I design a fluidized bed gasifier for own farm purpose or when I, when I try to scale it up or scale it down for, scale, for uh, own farm utilization. One more important item that many, many of us like to have gasifiers, but not everyone like, like to have the gasifier in my own backyard. It's not only us are doing the, the work with animal manure or manure gasification. Several of our colleagues in, in different universities in the industry are using and reporting su very successful uh, progress with converting animal manure to uh, value-added material, producer gas, or biochar. For, for example, I'm, I didn't report all of them, but I reported some of them here to show you that some, some other universities are doing excellent work. North Carolina are converting manure to energy. Uh, colleagues from West Virginia converting poultry manure through gasification process. In, in Minnesota, colleagues are working on producing heat from through the gasification process. Texas and the M, they have, as you can see on the right-hand side, top right hand side, a mobile unit that they, they have it, they developed it, and this unit converts more for animal waste pollution control. One of the very successful systems, it's not utilizing animal manure, but it's utilizing rice husks and, and straw gasification process, it's the one in rice land in Arkansas here, and they convert rice husk straw to generate almost 12 megawatt of electricity. Same time, they, they are producing 100,000 pounds per hour of processed steam. Certainly, as I said, that the good thing that they have a utilization method for utilization technique for heat produced on site. I mentioned earlier that several years we don't have a good way to say about biochar. But nowadays, we can say that biochar is a value-added material that I can either return back to the gasifier if it still contains some BTU, 
or incorporated to the soil. When I incorporate it to the soil, it can provide two good items. One, it can increase the water holding capacity, as soil scientists mentioned. By increasing the water holding capacity, I can reduce, to some extent, the amount of water I need for irrigation every time. Second, it can also enhance the, the maintenance of nutrients in the soil by the increasing the anion cation exchange capacity of biochar that it can hold nutrients and the, the roots of the plant will absorb it whenever the plant needs it. However, this slide is not showing biochar produced from animal manure. It shows a biochar produced from switchgrass, but I have it here as one of my recent publications to show you that biochar in a raw material, the top left uh, corner, is raw switchgrass. As you can see, it's a golden color. The bottom hand, bottom uh, right hand side, that's a more, more uh, severe condition in, a, in an ogre system. On top of this one, you can see that we kept the char in a batch system for three hours residence time under 400 degrees C. And as you can see, the, the color of the, of the biochar changes, which can, can enhance the quality of the biochar as a value added material produced. So two terms here can, two factors can affect the quality of the biochar. One is the residence time, and second is the temperature. As you can see, that the maximum temperature for, for this process is 400 degrees C, which we utilized in, in the previous uh, publication. So biochar can help me to sequester carbon. Aside from producing the gas, I can take the biochar and incorporate it back again to the soil. Biochar contains almost 30% in my case, in, in the previous experiment which we did, about 30% of the carbon in the raw material. So now I'm, I'm returning back 30% or able to return 30% of the carbon in, from the biochar back to the soil, which will help me to work as a, as a carbon sink, returning back carbon to the soil. So why should we, we utilize gasification? It's, it's chemistry and it gives us some infrastructure, cost of infrastructure, but why should I utilize gasification as a plan now? As you all know that any instability of the fossil fuel supply will, will certainly, certainly affect the price and availability of commodities, and especially what happened if it happened during the grain drying season. Why I'm taking this as an, as an example? Because you remember the, what happened recently in the propane supply in the Midwest, when we have a little bit of shortage, and then we can have plan B, that we can utilize gasification process in, in any case of shortage, rather than losing our commodities and or affecting the commodities. And as you know that if I, maintain, if I keep my grain in a high moisture content a little bit, then molds will start, and when molds will start, it's not easy to, to take them out. I can conclude from what I have here that gasification process is well-developed is well-developed technology, but still have some challenges that we need to overcome. Uh, some, uh, some of them are related to the gasifier's design, and others are related to the characteristics of the material. Having the gasification process of manure or agricultural residues can help us having a, a backup plan in any case of fossil fuel supply shortage, which we can, we can utilize this plan regardless of the, the decrease of the natural gas price or the, the more natural gas price discovery, the more natural gas discoveries, but at least it will help us with, with another plan in any uh, case. I would like to thank you very much for your attention and I will be glad to answer any question.